A year after the Tournament of Power and the battle against Broly, it would be a day like any other on planet Earth. Goku would be working in the field as Chi-Chi demanded. He'd been harvesting for several hours, and until he finished his work, Chi-Chi would not let him go train. Damn, how boring. How boring that is. I just want to train and get stronger, Goku would think. Bored. Suddenly, he would hear Kaiosama's voice in his mind. Goku, Goku, Kaiosama would call out. Kaiosama, is something wrong? Goku would ask, alertly. Goku, you have to go to planet Namek. Beerus is about to destroy it, Kaiosama would say. But why would he do something like that? The Namakuse are very peaceful beings, Goku would ask. I don't know. Stop asking questions and go before it all disappears, Kaiosama would alert. Goku, without delay, would arrive at the planet Namek and would see the Namakuse terrified by the presence of Beerus. Beerus, what are you doing? Goku would ask without understanding. This is none of your business, Beerus would respond by dropping a Hakai ball on the ground. The planet is going to disappear, a Namakuse would say. Goku would create a key ball. He would throw it towards Hakai's ball, so Hakai would just destroy the key ball. Beerus would watch Goku seriously. He hated mortals getting in his way. Don't confuse our relationship with my position. I am the god of destruction. If you oppose me, I will have to destroy you, Beerus would threaten. Mr. Beerus, I think you're taking this too seriously, the angel would say. Shut up, Beerus would shout angrily. Come on, Beerus. The Namakuse are like the yard rats. They're the harmless beings incapable of harming anyone. Goku would explain. Well, maybe Bakolo in the past wasn't so harmless, but that doesn't count. <laughs> Goku would laugh. Goku, do you know the God of Destruction? The Patriarch would ask in terror. Of course I know it. We're friends. He's just a little temperamental. Goku would answer, smiling innocently. You and I are not friends. You're just someone I could entertain myself fighting. Beerus would say proudly. Yeah, right. Wiz the angel would scoff. All right, Beerus, are you going to tell me or not? What's going on? Do you want to destroy this planet? Goku would ask seriously. Tell me something. What do you see so nice here? Beerus would point out. I don't understand, Goku would answer. It's a planet where there's only one fruit, and its animals are scarce, since those Namakuse don't eat. They only drink water, Beerus would say. I came here to get to know this place, and they're not even able to welcome me with a proper banquet. Beerus would explain his reasons for disappearing the planet. <laughs> and just for that nonsense, he plans to destroy the planet? Goku laughed. Did you just call the god of destruction a fool? Beerus would ask as he got serious. Well, I didn't mean it that way. But now that you say it, you are an idiot, Goku would reply. You're going to disappear a species to which I owe a lot. Thanks to them, I was able to revive my friends, and they even helped me make a wish to the Dragon God to fight Majin Buu, Goku would explain. You just bought yourself a ticket to be destroyed, Beerus would say as he manifested a violet aura around his body. Lord, Goku has made you even angrier, Whis would say. Beerus would launch himself towards Goku, hit him with a hook punch, and taking him high into the sky, then Beerus would catch up and with a hammer blow would knock Goku down, making him hit the ground. That's what happens to insolent people, Beerus would say very calmly. Goku would get up, furious. He couldn't believe he was fighting Beerus for something so insignificant. You made a big mistake, Beerus, Goku would say as he transformed into a Super Saiyan God Phase 2. Goku would throw himself at Beerus to attack him, but he still didn't have enough power. Beerus in that fight was fighting for real, something Goku had never known. Goku was giving it his all. He wouldn't allow the Namakuse to cease to exist because of the simple whim of Beerus. Goku would attack Beerus without success. His attacks were too slow for the God of Destruction. You should have thought of that before opposing me, Beerus would say. I will not allow you to harm the Namakuse. Goku would shout and then use the Kaioken increased tenfold. The ground beneath Goku would scream as Beerus smiled very confidently. You don't understand, Goku. Even though you're stronger than me, I'm still a god of destruction. <laughs> Beerus would laugh, mocking Goku. Goku would attack Beerus. Now if he represented a challenge for the god of destruction, both would exchange blows mutually at the same level. 
In a moment, Paris would kick Goku in the face, pushing him away from him. Then he would rise to the top of the sky. If you want, you can dodge this, but the Namakusai will disappear anyway, laughed Beerus as he created a large ball of Hakai. Hey, don't be a coward, Goku would shout very angrily. Mr. Beerus, you're taking this too far, warned the angel. Never mind, no one messes with Beerus, the god of destruction, Beerus would say as he laughed. Beerus would throw his great Hakai ball. Goku knew that if he dodged it and did nothing, the entire planet Namek would disappear. I can't allow it. I will protect them, Goku would shout. Goku would throw a... towards Beerus' Hakai ball, but his energy was consumed without him managing to diminish the Hakai. Goku would increase his ki, desperate to stop the Hakai ball, but he still couldn't do it. You won't get away with this, Beerus! Goku would shout, using all his strength. At this rate, he will eliminate Mr. Goku, Whis would warn. I don't care, Beerus would reply. Goku would put aside the idea of he had to do something that would try to save the Nanakusa, so he would cover himself with an energy barrier to try to resist the Hakai. You're crazy if you think you can resist the Hakai, Beerus would say. Come on, Frieza managed to control a Hakai. I should be able to do it too. Goku would say to himself. The Hakai Ball would reach Goku's hands. At first he seemed to resist it, but then he would be swallowed by the Hakai Ball. Goku would scream from the suffering. He felt the Hakai destroying each one of his cells. Still, he would not give up. Goku's body would start to glow. By joining his hands together, he would manage to assimilate the Hakai. He's controlling it, Whis would say, surprised. Little by little, Goku would compress the Hakai Ball in his hands. He had it under control. It can't be! It's impossible! Beerus would say in astonishment. Goku was exhausted. He had spent too much energy to manage to compress on Hakai. Until he finally wouldn't resist it anymore. The Hakai Ball would explode. Goku would be lost in the gigantic explosion. Wow, looks like that was the end of him. Whis would say, something sad. It's time to go, Beerus would order. As you say, sir, the angel would reply, preparing to retreat with the god of destruction. Beerus would drop a small ball of Hakai to disappear the planet Namek. The ball of Hakai would fall to the ground, but nothing would happen. But how? Beerus would ask. Beerus would again drop another small ball of Hakai. Again, the same thing would happen. This is impossible, Beerus would say, furious. Then Beerus, losing his patience, would drop a bigger Hakai ball. Goku would come out from under the ground, receive the Hakai in his hand, and absorb it. It can't be that Goku absorbs the Hakai, Beerus would say in terror. I'm not sure what's going on. All I know is that I'll finish you off, Goku would say as he approached towards Beerus. Goku was giving off a strange, violent energy. His gaze was aggressive. He was determined to finish Beerus off. Beerus would throw everything towards Goku. He would throw a fist punch towards him, but when he touched his face, it would barely hurt him. Then Goku would hold Beerus by the neck with great force. He was choking him and the God of Destruction could not get free. Where did he get this strength? Beerus would ask, worried. You're going to pay for what you tried to do. I've had enough of your whims, Goku would say angrily. Beerus would stretch his hands towards Goku and execute a Hakan, but nothing would happen. It's, it's immune to Hakan, Beerus would think in terror. I want you to leave this planet and never bother these people again, Goku would say seriously. Whis, help me, Beerus would shout. Whis would instantly arrive and knock Goku out with a blow to the back of the head. Wow, that's what you get for trusting, Whis would say. What happened to him? Beerus would ask. Whis would examine Goku with his staff. He would be able to identify destruction energy running through his body. I don't know how to say it, but the Hakai is now part of him, Whis would explain. That doesn't make any sense, Beerus would reply. You have witnessed it. I can assume that the Hakai ball you threw at him was the trigger. Now the question is that in theory, he would be a god of destruction, Whis would say. He can't be a god of destruction. He only has Hakai energy. He barely uses the key of a god. He doesn't become one completely, Beerus would say. Well, call him King of Destruction, if that makes you feel good, Whis would say. 
Now, the most serious thing will be to explain this to Zeno-sama, Whis would warn. Why would we have to explain this to Zeno-sama? Pyrrhus would ask, terrified. Because a mortal is capable of mastering the Hakai, even if he hasn't executed it yet. If he absorbs the Hakai or is immune to it, it means he can use it if he sets his mind to it, Whis would explain. Goku would start to move. He was about to regain consciousness. Let's go, Beerus would order. Whis and Beerus would retire, leaving Goku on the planet Namek. What happened? Goku would ask himself when he woke up. Now I remember. I was fighting Beerus, but it's weird. It seemed like he was immune to Hokai or something, Goku would say to himself. While the Namakusai would arrive to thank Goku for saving them. Thank you, Goku. You chased Beerus away and saved us, the patriarch thanked. I what? Goku would ask. What? You don't remember? The patriarch would ask. You just fought Beerus, and you rejected this a guy that was headed straight for our planet. That's right, I remember now, <laughs> laughed Goku. Goku would look at his hands. He noticed a special energy running through his veins. I feel kind of strange, Goku would say. Goku would sneeze and accidentally release the Kai energy. Thus, one of the Namakusai's house would disappear, and all the Namakusai would flee in terror. Lord Goku, why are you doing that? The Patriarch would ask nervously. Wait, I didn't mean it! Goku would say as he sneezed again. Now a mountain would disappear in the distance. Hey, I don't mean to be rude, but if you're going to be in this state, you'd better isolate yourself, warned the Patriarch. I'm sorry! Goku would apologize as he walked away from them. Goku would go to an area of the planet where there were no inhabitants, so innocent lives would not be in danger. What is this? Am I a god of destruction? Goku wondered in surprise. Goku would begin to test his new power. In a few minutes, he would be able to execute the Hokai at will. Wow, this is great! Goku would say excitedly. Whis and Beerus were watching Goku from their planet. They were attentive that he already mastered the Hokai. Well, Mr. Beerus, shall we go notify this to Zeno Sama? Whis would ask. Is it really necessary to do so? Beerus would ask, terrified. Just think what would happen if Zeno Sama found out on his own, Whis would warn. That's not what I'm worried about, Beerus would say. I'm worried about explaining to Zeno Sama how we got into this, Beerus would say nervously. And yet I've told him not to make a fuss over such simple things, <laughs> Whis would laugh. And meanwhile, Goku would continue testing his new Hokai technique. This power is incredible. I don't understand why Mr. Beerus always wants to destroy everything. If he appears in front of me again, next time I will show him no mercy. Maybe I could even surpass the gods of destruction. Goku would say that while preparing a Hokai in his hand. Little by little, the energy of destruction combined with his Saiyan blood became more powerful than ever. On planet Namek, Goku would be seen testing his new ability with the Hakai. He would be meditating while practicing this new energy running through his body. It's amazing that I'm able to absorb the Hakai just from a fight with Mr. Beerus. I still have to drain it and master it completely, Goku would think. Goku would travel with teleportation to Kaiosama's planet. The latter would be terrified by his presence. Hello, Kaiosama. Goku would greet Kaiosama normally. What are you doing here, Goku? Go away! Go away right now! Kaiosama would say in panic. Hey, what's wrong? Goku would ask. That's no way to greet me. Goku, I saw it all. You're a Hakai user, but you don't master it, Kaiosama would explain. This is a very small planet, and I don't want you to destroy it. Besides, even though I'm dead, I might disappear, Kaiosama would warn. Hey, it's no big deal. I came here to teach me how to master the Hokai, Goku would ask. No way, get out of here. I don't want to get in trouble with Mr. Beerus, Kaiosama said impatiently. You're so scary, Goku would say as he disappeared with the teleportation. Goku would arrive to planet Earth. He would realize that it was already night. Oh, I forgot I left everything here. Gigi's going to kill me, Goku said while looking at his tractor. Suddenly, Goku would sneeze, and then accidentally, the Hakai energy would come out of him, and the tractor would disappear. It can't be, Goku would say in surprise. Now Chi-Chi's really going to kill me. Then Goku would sneeze again. 
Now part of the crops would disappear. Damn it! What's wrong with me? I can't control the haka inside of me! Goku would say terrified. Goku would look for some mountainous area where he could be in peace without running the risk of destroying someone by accident. Now I understand Kaiosama's fear. I could destroy everything by accident, Goku would think as he reflected on what happened. Goku would sense Vegeta's key. Vegeta would arrive as he was looking for him. Vegeta, what are you doing here? Goku would ask nervously. Not that I'm interested in your business, but Chi Chi's worried about you, and Bulma keeps asking me to help her look for you, Vegeta explains. Vegeta, get out of here as soon as possible. It's for your own good, Goku would ask, but Vegeta wouldn't leave just like that. For my sake? Who do you think you're talking to? Vegeta would ask, a little irritated. Vegeta, please! Some things happened, Goku would say until a sneeze would not let him continue talking. Because of the sneeze, Goku would disappear to a whole mountain. But what the hell? Vegeta would say surprised. Was that Akai? That's what I was trying to explain. <laughs> Goku laughed. At least have the wisdom to sneeze the other way, Vegeta would ask. Goku would take a few minutes to explain to Vegeta everything that happened with Beerus. Now he had a fight against him and managed to absorb Akai's energy. It makes a lot of sense, Vegeta would say. That's why I need to be alone. Give that message to the others. And please don't worry about me, Goku would ask. You'll have to ask for help. You won't be able to stay all your life in that state, Vegeta warned. I just don't know who to turn to. My relationship with Beerus, I don't think is very good. We tried to kill each other recently, <laughs> laughed Goku, somewhat unconcerned. Well, you'll have to look for help somewhere. The best thing would be a god of destruction, Vegeta would recommend. I only ask you to please stay away from the Earth, lest you destroy it by some incident, Vegeta would tell him seriously. Goku would meditate for a few minutes on how to remedy the situation. Since Beerus had tried to kill him, he could only turn to the other gods of destruction. After the Tournament of Power, none of the Gods of Destruction can stand me. They don't even want Mr. Beerus, Goku would think. Goku would analyze what little he knew about each of the Gods of Destruction. Going with Champa will be for him to be mocked by Beerus. He would make enemies to Universe 6 and 7. Kutela is a cheater. He's the last one I can trust. I could talk to Velmood, but I don't trust clowns, Goku would think. Then he would remember that Universe 3 was a universe where technology was very advanced. That's right! Maybe they can help me there, Goku would think. I think their god of destruction is called Moscow. And they're Kaioshin, eh? If I remember correctly. Goku would concentrate to find the key of both. It had taken him several minutes to do it, since they were in another universe far away. After achieving it, he would arrive at the planet of the god of destruction. I think this is it, Goku would say when he saw a huge laboratory. Moscow would grab Goku's neck with his mechanical arm and lift him into the air. Hey, let go of me, Goku would ask. Moscow would only talk by playing his horn without Goku understanding it. Hey, he didn't speak in robots. I don't know what you're saying. Goku would try to free himself, but Moscow's strength was too much. Mr. Moscow says, what the hell are Beerus' friends doing here? The Angel of Universe 3, called Kampari, would answer. I don't know how you understand. He doesn't even talk, Goku would say. Mr. Mosko wants to know the reason for your visit, Kampari would say. I came to ask for help. I guess you could help me, Goku would say, and Mosko would release Goku, finally letting him free. That was close, <laughs> Goku would laugh. Then Goku would sneeze and destroy half of the lab. Mosko and Kimpari were amazed by what they would have seen. Goku had just accidentally used Takai in front of their eyes. Mr. Mosko asks if that's the reason for your visit, Kimpari said. That's right. Since your universe is technological, I figured you would have some device or invention to help me. Goku would say that and then explain to them what had happened with Beerus and how Goku had absorbed the Hakai. Please, you have to help me. We revived them with these Super Dragon Spears. It's just this one favor, Goku would beg. Mosko would start talking with his horn, although he would be almost three minutes talking without stopping. What did he say? Goku would ask. Mr. Mosko, don't you think that's rude? Camberry would ask. 
Moscow would go back to talking with his horn. To sum it all up, Mr. Moscow says he doesn't owe favors to anyone, but he knows someone who could help him, Gambari would say. Please, I want to fix this, or I'll destroy everything without wanting to, Goku would ask without knowing what to do to heal himself. Goku would wait a few hours on the planet of Universe 3. He had already destroyed a thing or two by accident as time went by. Hey, who's coming? I'm bored, Goku would say. Moscow would start making his honking sounds. I can't tell you that, Mr. Moscow, Kenpari would say. Moscow would again make another sound with his horn. Mr. Moscow says, if you don't want to wait, you can go, Kampari would say. Come on, don't be like that with me, Goku would answer. At that moment, Jairus, the goddess of destruction of Universe 2, would arrive, accompanied by her angel, Sour. So that's the mortal with Akai's energy, Jairus would say as she looked at Goku with attention. I remember you, you're the goddess of the universe with the power of love and stuff, <laughs> Goku would laugh. Do you distrust the power of love? Jairus would ask seriously. No, no, not at all, miss, Goku would say politely. Wow, how obedient. I'm starting to like you, Jairus would say, throwing Goku a seductive look. Goku would sneeze again, destroying some instruments in the room. Moscow would say something by blowing his horn while waving his arms. He seems to be furious. You'd better take him away at once. Mr. Moscow is a bit upset, Gambari mentioned seriously. Jairus would take Goku to his planet in Universe 2 to help him with the portal energy he couldn't control. So your name is Goku, Jairus would say as she walked around the Saiyan while examining him closely. Well, yes, that is my name. You act like you don't know it, Goku would reply. And tell me, Goku, are you married? Do you have a family? Jairus would ask with curiosity. Yes, I'm married and I have two sons. A young son and an adult son who had a daughter. So I'm also a grandfather, Goku would answer with that smile. How interesting. You look very young to be a grandfather. And above all, very handsome, Jairus said since she liked Goku from the beginning. Well, signs take a long time to get old, Goku would answer. And tell me, how old are you? Goku would ask normally. Jairus was shocked by the question that Goku had asked her. With a slap on her face, she would expel him away, making Goku crash into a wall. How dare you ask a woman her age, Jairus would say angrily. You never ask a lady her age, even less if she's a goddess. I can see we're going to have very hectic days, Sour would sigh. Goku would come out of the rubble of the wall he had destroyed. He was quite sore. Sour would use his staff to rebuild the destroyed wall with his magic. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you, <laughs> Goku laughed. You should learn how to treat a woman, Jairus would say seriously. And I will gladly help you, Jairus smiled. Hey, I don't understand what you're getting at, but remember I'm a married man, Goku would say somewhat tense. Jairus would throw a threatening look at Goku because she didn't like his warning. You are not serious, Jairus would ask furious. Remember that you came all the way here because you need help with the Hakai energy that runs inside your body. I will help you, but you are everything, I tell you. Jairus threatened as she rested her finger on Goku's chest. Okay, and what do you want me to do? Goku would ask, curious. You will stay here and you will be my lover, Jairus would say, smiling. Wait a minute, I have a wife. I won't leave Chi Chi for you, Goku would say seriously. Then go with your wife. I hope it lasts long enough, as you don't want to destroy her with your Akai. Jairus smiled. Hey, what did you just say? Goku would ask angrily as his key increased. What you heard? If you don't want my help, you can leave. But remember, one day you'll be sleeping peacefully, and by simply coughing, you could wipe out your whole family, Jairus warned. Goku increased his key more and more because of the anger he felt. He didn't like to be pressured or threatened with his family. After a few seconds, he would calm down, since he would come to reason that what Jairus said was true. I have no other choice, Goku would think. I must do this for the sake of others. Goku would say that to himself. All right, I'll do whatever you want, Goku would finally say. That's the way I like it, you being obedient, Jairus smiled. 
It seems simple for someone as beautiful as me to get a man. But believe it or not, many don't have the stamina to be with me. I don't know if I was clear. What do you mean by resisting? Oh, I get it, Goku would say when he understood what Jiris was referring to. You have a Kai energy in your body. That means that the Hakai has no effect on you. We'll have a great time together, Jairus would say. We have visitors, Sour would say, as he felt Wiss and Beerus were close by. A few seconds later, Wiss and Beerus would arrive at Jairus' palace. Hey, what are you doing here, Goku? Beerus would ask. If I remember correctly, the last time I saw you, you wanted to kill me. Goku would reply, somewhat annoyed. Mr. Goku, we came for you to help you with your little problem, Wiss would explain. Goku is mine, Jairus would say, annoyed. So I would appreciate it if you would get out of here. I don't know what you're up to, Jairus, but Goku belongs to Universe 7, and that's where he'll stay, Beerus would say angrily. But Jairus would attack Beerus with a key beam that would hit his shoulder. Sour and Wiss were shocked. They knew that the gods of destruction were forbidden to fight each other. Miss Jairus, said Sour, calling her attention. Get out of here, Jairus would shout, very annoyed. Apparently now she wanted to stay as Goku just for herself and turn the Saiyan into her lover. Beerus and Sherry would be about to clash, but each of their angels would step in between to avoid a possible fight. Stop, you two, Wiss and Sour would say at the same time. Do you want to destroy the whole universe by fighting each other? Wiss would say seriously. Miss Jerez, remember to behave, Sour would seriously warn. This is about me, I'll be the one to decide. Goku would say that while stepping in. Goku, you will come to Universe 7, where you came from, Beerus would say while pointing at him in a threatening way. Goku would slowly approach towards Beerus. He was watching him with a lot of hatred. Goku's ki would begin to increase, only his body would be surrounded by Hakai energy. This is all because of you, Goku would say after giving Beerus a strong fist punch in the stomach, which would leave him breathless. He's strong, Jairus would think in amazement. I like that one. Get out of here! Don't think I forgot that you were about to murder an entire planet on a mere whim, Goku would say, furious. Beerus, without staying behind, would throw a fist punch towards Goku, but Goku would hold his fist resisting the attack. Then he would start to clench Beerus' fist. The God of Destruction was being tortured by Goku. Beerus, Goku would say in a strange, resonant voice, as his eyes glowed a violet hue. Goku would let go of Beerus. The God of Destruction would pull away from him. How could he possibly have so much power? Beerus would ask in terror. Goku would fall to his knees and then hold his head because of the intense pain he felt. Get out of here, Beerus, Jairus would say. Mr. Beerus, we better get out of here, Wiss would say. Beerus and Wiss should leave so as not to make things even worse, while Goku looked in bad shape. What's wrong with you, Goku? Jairus would ask, but Goku would not answer. Goku would start to increase his ki. He would look furious and seemed to be out of control. Goku, can you hear me? Jairus would ask as she approached him. Miss Jairus, move away, Sour would warn. Goku would create a huge ki blast against his will. Sour would arrive just in time to protect Jairus with an energy shield. It's like the Hakai is controlling him, Jairus would say seriously. Then Goku would fall, fainting to the ground. Jairus and Sour were amazed by the power that Goku unleashed. I must have him under control, or else he might turn against me, Jairus would say. Jairus would point to Goku. She would create with her powers a bracelet around his neck. With this bracelet, I can have it under my feet. It will be mine alone, Jairus would say with a devilish smile. Hours later, Goku would finally wake up. What happened? Goku would ask as he looked around. Goku would touch his neck. He would realize he was wearing the bracelet. What is this? Goku would ask. It's a bracelet, Jairus would answer. I already know that. I mean, what am I doing with this on? Goku would say, furious. It's a security measure to control you. You almost lost your mind a moment ago. The Hakai energy seemed to dominate your body, 
Jairus would explain. That doesn't make sense, Goku would say as he tried to remove the bracelet. But as he did so, Jairus would snap her fingers, and Goku would be paralyzed by an intense pain running through his entire body. What did you just do? Goku would ask in pain. Believe me, it's for your own good. You don't remember, but you lost your mind, and your key was sending Hakai energy, Jairus warned. That doesn't make sense. I don't believe you, Goku would say, furious again, and Hakai's energy would start to surround his body again. You see? Jairus would ask, pointing at him. Goku would realize that what Jairus was telling him was true. He could see Akai's energy coursing through his body. It can't be true, but how? Goku would ask, terrified. With that bracelet, it can keep you calm. I know it hurts a little, but if you lose your mind again, you could end up with me, Jairus would say, sighing. It's not my intention to harm anyone. That's why I desperately sought to be able to master this. Even if I have to give up the use of the Hakai, Goku would say more calmly. Don't worry, I'll help you, Jairus would say. That's not true. You will be my slave for all eternity, Jairus would think, since that was her real plan. Sour would observe his staff with attention. When he would make a gesture of annoyance, he would hit it against the floor. Meanwhile, Whis was watching everything that was happening inside the palace of Jairus, using his staff. But at the moment that Sour had his staff on the floor, Whis had stopped seeing what was happening. What a thing! My brother noticed that I was spying on him, Whis would say, somewhat dissatisfied. Never mind, we already know enough. Now we must find a way to get Goku out of there, Beerus would say, angrily. Remember that Beerus has him manipulated with his bracelet. He can even control his emotions with it, warned Whis. Wouldn't it be wiser to leave Goku in Jairus' hands? Even if it doesn't help him, the good thing is that at least he won't get out of control. Remember that Mr. Goku unleashes great power thanks to the Hakai in his body. I absolutely refuse, Beerus would say. Goku belongs to Universe 7. If Xenosama wants to see him, how will I explain to him that he's in Universe 2? Oh, now you care what Xenosama thinks. But when you were about to kill him, you didn't. What a thing with you, Mr. Beerus. You don't change anymore, the offended angel would say. Some days would pass while Goku would be under the dominion of Jairus. During the days that would pass, the control over Goku had increased. By that time, Goku almost did not speak. He looked like a zombie without expression. Jairus had placed a gold chain on the bracelet, so he would take him everywhere with her, as if he was her pet. Who is the most beautiful goddess of all? Jairus would ask Goku. It's you, goddess Jairus, Goku would say, hypnotized. But what a nice slave I have, Jairus smiled. You'll be that I blush. Don't you think this is getting out of control, Sour would ask. Not at all. Goku is under my control, Jairus would answer. Tell me, Goku, who is your owner? Jairus would ask. It's you, Big Jairus, Goku would say again with that empty expression. What happens if Xenosama asks for Mr. Goku? Sour would ask again. I will tell him that I'm working on finding a way to remove Akai's energy from his body, the Goddess of Destruction would reply. Sour would look seriously at Jairus. He didn't like the situation, and he also feared that Xenosama might get upset. On the other hand, Wiz would have an idea to get Goku back. Mr. Beerus, what do you think about recruiting Vegeta? Wiz would ask. What for? Beerus would ask seriously while resting on a bed. Goku and Vegeta always compete for who is stronger. If we teach Vegeta how to use the Hakai, I'm sure he will have a good fight against Lord Goku, Wiz would say. You forget that Goku is being controlled by Jairus? Beerus would reply. How long can that control last if Goku has to face someone very strong? Wiz would ask. Remember that you can't fight Jairus, but a mortal could. I have a better idea, Beerus would say. We'll give the news to Vegeta, and he'll go find Goku on his own. That way we won't have anything to do if anything goes wrong. Gee, it's a good thing you came up with that all on your own, Wiz would say somewhat grumpily. Hours later, Wiss and Beerus would arrive on Earth. They would go on a visit to Vegeta's house, meeting him and Bulman. Hey, you two, we haven't heard from Goku, Bulma would say annoyed. That's why we came, Wiss would say. Wiss and Beerus would fill them both in on what happened to Goku. 
That witch is manipulating Goku? As soon as I see her, she'll pay for it, Bulma would say furiously. I doubt it. Remember, she's a god of destruction, Whis would laugh. Then there's not much you can do, Vegeta would say seriously. Hey, Vegeta, aren't you going to help Goku? He's your friend, Bulma would say, annoyed. I never said he was my friend. Besides, he seems to be in good hands, Vegeta would reply. Come on, Vegeta. That Jairus has Goku like a puppet. She makes him do whatever she wants, Bulma would say. It's not much different from what Gigi used to do with him, Vegeta smiled, making fun of the situation. I understand what's going on. Vegeta is afraid to face Goku and a goddess of destruction, <laughs> Beerus laughed, but only telling him that to provoke him. Did you just call me a coward? Vegeta would ask in annoyance. If that wasn't the reason, why else wouldn't you go save Goku? Beerus would scoff. Vegeta increases key due to anger. He was offended by Beerus' comment. Mr. Beerus, Vegeta couldn't do anything. Remember that Goku increased his power thanks to the Kai. And besides, Jairus is a goddess of destruction. <laughs> Whis laughed. What did you say? Vegeta would ask, furious. It seems that these two are manipulating Vegeta to go on his own, Balma would think as she realized their plan. And the fool hasn't even noticed. Vegeta, don't feel bad. We know that Goku has always surpassed you. And now that he increased his power, the Hokai, you are far from his level, Bulma would say. Whis and Beerus looked surprised by Bulma's words. Vegeta looked even more furious. If I could against Toppo, Sakai, I'm the only one who can deal with this situation. Whis, you're going to train me and teach me how to use the Hokai, Vegeta would say. I don't know if I can do it. After all, I can't teach just anyone to use the Hokai, Whis would reply. Whis, teach him, Beerus would say. And after that, Vegeta would be taken to the planet of Beerus, where Whis would train him to master the Hokai and thus be able to face Jairus, and also Goku if necessary. Whis would train Vegeta in a special time room for gods, where one day outside was 100 years inside, and one day inside that room would be enough. Vegeta would come out after training for 100 years. Beerus would watch Vegeta closely. He could feel how his presence had changed. Wow, Vegeta, you've outdone yourself, Beerus would say. Now show me if you've mastered the Hokai. Vegeta would stretch his finger towards Beerus' castle. With a small flash of Hokai, he would make it disappear completely. Beerus was amazed, but also furious. You idiot! You just destroyed my castle! You can prove it another way! Beerus was shouting very angrily. Wow, I think he went a little overboard, Wes would laugh. A little? Beerus would ask, furious. Where will I sleep now? Where will I eat? Where will I live? Beerus would look at Vegeta with hatred. He was about to attack him, but when he tried to do so, Vegeta would look at him with seriousness. Beerus went back away, terrified. What is this feeling of alertness? Beerus would ask. It's as if my instincts were telling me that I would die if I attacked Vegeta. Beerus would think worriedly. I see I can feel it, Whis would say. Vegeta's a completely different man now. Whis, please take me to Goku, Vegeta would say very calmly. Just try not to kill Goku, Beerus would ask. I'll try, Vegeta smiled. Whis would travel with Vegeta straight to the planet of the Goddess of Destruction of Universe 2. Upon arriving at her palace, Jairus looked annoyed by Vegeta's presence. What is that dirty mortal doing here? Jairus would ask, annoyed. I came to fight Kakarot. Don't interfere if you don't want to die. Vegeta would say that calmly as he would see Goku who was being controlled and was standing next to the goddess of Universe 2. Jerez would be furious for Vegeta's presence. She felt that they were planning something against her. Well, what are you doing here without your god of destruction? And with this pathetic mortal? Jerez would ask furious. Mr. Vegeta is the successor of Lord Beerus. And he has asked me to claim Lord Goku because he belongs to Universe 7, Whis would reply. I want you to get out of here right now, Jairus would order. Goku would come up behind Jairus' throne. His expression was unrecognizable. He was looking at Vegeta with hatred. Kakarot, so there you are, Vegeta would say seriously. Jairus would pull Goku towards her by tugging on his gold chain. Hey, we Saiyans are not slaves to the gods. Vegeta would say seriously. 
Goku is under my care until you can get the Hakai energy out of him. Jiris would explain, even though it wasn't true. She just wanted to use it. Vegeta would start walking slowly towards Jiris with his head held high. Stop, or I will destroy you! Jiris threatened, but Vegeta ignored her completely. I said stop, that's an order! Miss Jiris, are you sure? Sour said. Shut your mouth! Jiris interrupted angrily. Jiris would create a Hakai ball and throw it towards Vegeta without hesitation. You asked for it! Jiris smiled. The Hakai Ball would reach Vegeta, but Vegeta would hold it in his hand. Impossible! It can't be! Jairus would say, terrified. Vegeta would clench his fist, and Hakai's ball would disappear. I remind you that Vegeta is the successor of Lord Beerus, therefore he is quite qualified to use the Hakai, and that makes him immune to such a technique, Wiz would explain. Jairus would stand on guard to face Vegeta. She was ready to fight him. I don't care if you are a successor. If you come to my palace to bother me, you will pay for it, Jairus would say, furious. Jairus would invoke a bow and arrow created with Ki, since that was her special ability to create energy weapons. She would aim straight at Vegeta. The energy arrow would grow as it approached Vegeta. It would impact on his chin, but Vegeta would only move his head back by the impact. I came to take Kakarot, not to waste my time with you, Vegeta would say seriously. He's too strong, Jairus would think as she took a few steps back. Miss Jairus, Sour would call out. I told you not to bother, Jairus would answer instantly. Kakarot, let's get out of here, Vegeta would ask. Vegeta, Goku would say, although he spoke in a clumsy way. Goku, stay there, Jairus would say. Vegeta, he would say again while a strange violet vapor would start to emanate from his skin. What's happening to him? Jairus would ask. Stop it, Goku. Calm down, Jairus would demand. Vegeta! Goku would shout, created an explosion of Hakai energy, and Goku would disappear Jairus' palace completely. Only Vegeta and Jairus were left with their respected angels, who protected them with a force field. Hakai's energy in his body acts like the Kaioken, but it's consuming him, Vegeta would say. What a mess. He wiped out the whole place, Sour would say without much emotion. Goku, look what you've done, Jairus would say furious. Jairus would try to pull on the gold chain he had, but would realize it was no longer attached to Goku. Goku, sit down, Jairus would say, but Goku would not obey. I said sit down, Jairus would demand, but Goku would ignore Jairus' orders completely. I don't understand what's going on, Jairus would say terrified. He's supposed to have the armband on. You should accept all my orders. That's what I was trying to tell you, Sour would reply. The bracelet was losing power. Goku's armband would begin to glow and completely dematerialize. Seems to me the Lord Goku is no longer under your control, Wes would say. It can't be. What will happen now? Jairus would ask, worried. Vegeta would approach Goku to see how he was. He was still in that strange state. He seems to be unaware of Vegeta by the way he was looking at him. Gakurat, can you recognize me? Vegeta would ask. Goku would open his mouth, spitting a large beam of ki. Vegeta would dodge it by moving his head to the side. Gakurat, it's me, Vegeta! Vegeta would say, trying to make Goku come through his senses. Vegeta! Goku would say as his eyes would turn red. Vegeta would be on guard as he had read Goku's usefulness. It reminds me of Broly. But it's different. The Hakai seems to give him a destructive instinct, Vegeta would think. Vegeta! Goku shouted as he lunged towards Vegeta. Goku would attack Vegeta relentlessly. His punches spilled Hakai energy, yet he still couldn't connect any attacks. Kakarot, what's wrong with you? You fight without any technique, Vegeta would say, but Goku would still not answer. Goku would hold Vegeta tightly by the neck and would start to shake him. Goku's Akai energy would begin to surround his arms and would reach Vegeta. If it wasn't for me being a Hakai user, I would have disappeared, Vegeta would think. Vegeta would perform a key explosion by transforming into Super Saiyan God Phase 2, and thus would manage to get Goku off his back. Mr. Vegeta, you better fight seriously and defeat Goku before he consumes himself in his Hakai, Wiz warned. Vegeta would throw everything towards Goku. He would connect a strong kick in the stomach that would throw him away. Then Vegeta, at great speed, would reach Goku's back, and with a kick, he would lift him high in the sky. 
Vegeta would quickly fly towards the sky as he would reach Goku and would hit him with a hammer blow by joining his hands together. Don't ever do it, Whis would say from afar. Goku would impact on the ground, leaving a large crater. Looking up, he would see a set of key balls coming towards him. Goku would cover himself with his arms to steal the boxes of key balls that Vegeta was throwing him relentlessly. After so many attacks from Vegeta, he would go down to check Goku's condition. Come on, Kakarot. That wasn't enough for someone like you, Vegeta would say. You didn't even use any transformation. Goku would struggle to his feet. Still, he wouldn't stop releasing a Kai energy. With every step he took, a part of the ground beneath him would disappear from the destruction. Vegeta! Goku shouted. What's wrong with him? Jairus would ask, terrified. Goku has lost the use of reason. The only thing that keeps him going is his fighting spirit. Vegeta, for him, is a symbol of overcoming. Facing him is not allowing himself to lose, Wiz would explain. But that doesn't guarantee that his attitude will annul his guy, Jairus would say. Who knows? When it comes to Goku, anything can happen. Wiz smiled. Vegeta would launch himself towards Goku again. But before he could get there, Goku would transform himself into Super Saiyan God Phase 2, creating a great roar around him. Now fight with everything you've got, Vegeta would say. Goku would rest his hands on the ground, send a high energy all over the planet, and in an instant he would disappear. It's not possible! My planet! Jairus would say in amazement. They had all endured the destruction since it was Vegeta, Jairus, and the angels. They were in the middle of space, unaffected by the void. Kakarot, I don't know you at all, Vegeta would say seriously. Destroy! Goku would say furiously. You just destroyed a planet completely! That's something you would never do! Vegeta would say annoyed. Goku would disappear with teleportation before everyone's eyes. I escape! Vegeta would say in astonishment. It's all wrong with Goku using the Hakai freely. It would cause chaos throughout the universe, Whis would say, alert. This is your fault for bringing Vegeta here. I had Goku perfectly under control, Jerry shouted angrily. On the contrary, you haven't listened to my warnings, Sour would say. You shut your mouth, Jerris would say as she tried to slap Sour, but the angel would cover himself by holding Jerris's hand. Calm down, or I'll talk to Zeno Sama to get you removed from your post, Sour would threaten. Whis would search for Goku with the staff. He would find him in the center of one of the galaxies in Universe 2. I have very bad news, Whis would say when showing the staff to everyone. Goku was seen in the center of a galaxy. In a few seconds, a Kai energy would expand throughout the galaxy, disappearing it completely. And this is more destruction than a god of destruction should do, Jairus would say. Goku would start teleporting to different points of the universe, too. He would disappear all the galaxies that crossed his path. Whis, quick, take me to it, Vegeta asked. Do you really think you have the level to face him? Whis would ask seriously. Come on, Whis, this is a matter between science, Vegeta would demand. Whis would go with Vegeta to a galaxy where Goku was. Vegeta would interrupt Goku by arriving with a flying kick behind his back. Kakarot, what the hell is wrong with you? You were supposed to be fighting me, Vegeta would say angrily. I just want to destroy everything, Goku would say. Destroy is my sole purpose. But Kakarot, the Hakai went to your head, Vegeta would say in astonishment. No, Vegeta, now I will dominate the Hakai. I am the king of destruction, more powerful than the gods of destruction themselves. <laughs> Goku laughed. It can't be you. You're not Kakarot. Vegeta would say, furious. Kakarot, Goku, whatever you like to call me, I self-proclaim myself king of destruction anyway. Goku would say that very seriously. Goku would increase his key to the maximum, impressing Vegeta. Then he would reach him, connecting a strong punch in the stomach. Now it's your turn to take all the damage, Goku would say, furious. Goku would throw a fist punch towards Vegeta, but Vegeta would hold his hand. Don't think you can take me so easily, Vegeta would say as he would connect a knee to his stomach. Goku and Vegeta would begin to exchange blows hand to hand in the middle of space. Sour and Jerez would arrive to witness the fight. What kind of beings are the Saiyans? Jairus would ask as she appreciated the immense power between the two. The Saiyans are amazing beings, Wiz would answer. Xenosama and Daishinkan would arrive. Jairus would be terrified. 
Great Sinosama, what brings you here? Jairus would ask while bowing. The question you just asked lacks total intelligence, Daishin Khan would say seriously. I don't understand, Jairus would say. That was a stupid question, Sour would interject. What happened to Goku? Zeno-sama would ask by pointing at him. I'll explain it to him, great lord, Jairus would say. Let's say that Lord Goku, fighting against Beerus, absorbed a lot of Hakan. Little by little, the energy of destruction was controlling his body, reaching the result that you see now, Twist would say without letting Jairus speak. Lord Beerus suggested to train Vegeta so he can use the Hakan, so when fighting Goku, he could control it, Whis would answer. But Goku's out of control! We saw it all and he won't stop destroying galaxies! Zeno-sama would appreciate. Great Zeno-sama, allow me a moment, Sour would say. This is all due to Jairus' manipulation, since she promised to take away Akai's energy, but instead she just turned him into her slave, Sour would explain. Is that true? Zeno-sama would ask Whis. Confirmed, Whis would reply. Zeno-sama would raise his hand and make Jairus disappear completely. Great Lord, what do you plan to do with Lord Goku? Daishinkan would ask. Zeno-sama would remain thoughtful for a few seconds while making a decision. First, let's see the fight, Zeno-sama would say cheerfully. Vegeta seemed to be dominating the situation as he had Goku under control. Take this! Vegeta would say as he hit Goku hard on his chest. Goku would lose his transformation in a moment. Vegeta would hook Goku's neck. He would gently rest his hand on top of his head. Now I'll take care of removing that Hakai energy from you, Vegeta would say. Goku would instantly join. With one blow, he would break free from Vegeta and move away from him. Goku's eyes would roll back in his head, while a white aura surrounded his body. It's the Ultra Instinct, Vegeta would say in terror. You don't stand a chance against me anymore. No one can beat me. Goku would shout that as he would start using the Ultra Instinct state completely. Vegeta now didn't stand a chance against Goku. Universe 7 was represented in the first Tournament of Bauer by 10 formidable warriors. Frieza, Krillin, Androids number 18 and 17, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Piccolo, Muten Roshi, Ten Shinhan. Their maximum levels reached for this saga were as follows. Frieza is in his golden form. Goku, Super Saiyan God Phase 2 combined with the Gaioken. Vegeta, Super Saiyan God Phase 2. Gohan, Definitive State, Roshi and Piccolo, Full Power, while the rest of the characters do not have a representative level increase. During the tournament, some of the characters gained new powers, as is the particular case of Goku, reaching a new level that by then exceeded all his limits. He talked about the Ultra Instinct signal, and later the full Ultra Instinct, which he used briefly against Jiren in the final. On the other hand, Vegeta got access to his own evolution of the Super Saiyan God Phase 2. So, this is how the final team of Universe 7 would look like during the first tournament of the Force. But, how would the team change if there was another tournament of power today? Immediately after what happened with Broly, Moro, Granola, and of course, what happened in the superhero movie, Frieza will remain in the team of Universe 7. After becoming the most powerful warrior of the entire universe, at the end of the Granola Saga, where he reached his final evolution of Black Frieza, this after training for 10 years in a room of the soul and time, overwhelmingly surpassing the current maximum levels of Goku and Vegeta together. So, it cannot miss for any reason in the new team of the Tournament of Power. Grillin and Number 18 currently continue to demonstrate that they are there to help in any problem. However, Krillin will be one of the first to leave the team. This is because he had the worst performance by far during the first tournament. 
This will be enough reason for number 18 not to be interested in participating again, since her husband Krillin will not be there. Number 17 will be the winner of the first tournament. He was undoubtedly the big surprise of the team. The return to see him again would be ideal. Despite this, 17 is very difficult to convince. He's very disinterested in the conflicts that arise. As we have not seen him again in the last story arcs, was one of the great absentees during the invasion of Moro on Earth and in the battle against Cell Max. So it is not certain his participation in a new tournament. Even so, I think there is no better candidate than him. So attracting him with a good reward, as in the first tournament, could be more than enough to convince him again. Goku, the protagonist, obviously cannot miss, who, after remembering the Saiyan pride thanks to his father, has managed to access his own variant of Ultra Instinct, where he no longer tries to imitate Los Angeles, but where he is simply the same. The new variation of Ultra Instinct is, in appearance, very similar to the State Signal or Premonitory, but with the difference that Goku does not lose his so characteristic attitudes, resulting in a variant even better than the own Ultra Instinct dominated by Silverhair, since in this new state he demonstrated to be able to give a better fight to Gas in his final state than with the complete Ultra Instinct. Vegeta will also return, who is probably currently going through one of his best moments, since he surprised us all after reaching his last state called Ultra Ego. In the Granola Saga, which he reached after learning how to use the energy of destruction correctly, thanks to the training he has had with the god Beerus lately, being this imposing state the equivalent and counterpart of Goku's Ultra Instinct. Gohan will also be part of the new Universe 7 team, where he will surely repeat as team captain, since during Superhero, he obtained one of his most important power increases in all of his history, after an outburst of anger when he believed that Piccolo had been killed by Cell Max. He was pushed beyond his limits in his final state, which caused the state to evolve into his beast mode, becoming one of the most powerful warriors in Universe 7. Roshi and Ten Shinhan are characters of the old school of Dragon Ball. Currently, they are still in very good physical shape. They contributed a lot and were great help in the old Tournament of Power. Thanks to be the most experienced martial artists, and also of course they helped during the invasion of Moro. The problem is that they have suddenly emerged a lot of exceptional warriors by the universe, so their places will have to be seated to give way to this new generation. And finally, Piccolo, who will remain in the team after starring in Superhero where he won a very important power-up thanks to the additional bonus of the wish he asked Shenlong to unlock all his dormant potential inside him, reaching his orange Piccolo status. These would be all the characters most likely to return to participate in a new power tournament. But who will be the new members of the team? Broly, the Saiyan prodigy of unlimited potential, is currently training alongside Goku, learning to control his powers and emotions. Broly is not someone evil, so they can easily count on him for an upcoming tournament, where we will surely see a new facet of the Saiyan, having full control over his limited power. The Super Android Gamma Number 1, who has a strong sense for justice, and after what happened in Superhero, works together with his creator for the Capsule Corporation, so they are not evil and can also rely on him, although he was not the strongest of the Gammas, since his brother was much more powerful. He still has a pretty good level, only being below the final states of Gohan and Piccolo, to give you an idea. So this new android could easily replace number 18. Pan, one of the biggest surprises of the Earth, with a very hopeful potential for the future of Dragon Ball. His training with Piccolo is giving good results. However, his young age will prevent him from participating in this next tournament due to his lack of experience. Goten and Trunks have finally left behind their infantile stage. Despite this, in Superhero, it was demonstrated that both have seriously neglected the training, reaching questionable physical conditions in the battle against Cell Max, where they still depend totally on the Goten's fusion to be relevant, a sign that they do not trust their own abilities. For this reason, Goten and Trunks would also be discarded for a next tournament, because although Goten is quite powerful, he has the great weakness of his personality. He tends to be very confident in battle and can become quite naive. Plus, they would almost automatically lose a place in the team, going to make 9 warriors instead of 10. So if the team of Universe 7 requires a more complex strategy, there are other characters that could help more than Goten and Trunks, such as Granola. The future of this new character introduced in the most recent manga saga of Dragon Ball Super is uncertain. 
What we currently know about Granola is that her life expectancy was considerably reduced after the desire to become the most powerful warrior of the universe. And by the enormous sacrifice of vitality that she had to use during the battle against Goss of the Ahita brothers, everything indicates that Granola will die very soon. However, this is Dragon Ball, and the good characters always have another chance. In this way, he will be able to recover his vitality. But obviously, he will lose all his power, but this is not so bad after all. Granola, thanks to the fight he had against the Saiyans, he learned a lot from Goku and Vegeta. He not only fought against them, but he also fought together with them. Teamwork is something essential in the Tournament of Power, something that Granola already has experience of. Majin Buu, we all know he's a strong character. He's always been considered by Goku, and even though he was someone very important during Moro's arc in the manga, in great part it was thanks to the great Kaioshin, who in theory will not return again. And although he has demonstrated new abilities and is in his prime at present, Majin Buu's real problem is that he cannot be trusted because of his sleeping problem. He's sold out Universe 7 twice because of this, so unfortunately, he will not be an option. Oob has had occasional appearances throughout the manga of Dragon Ball Super. His last appearance was fundamental to be able to defeat Moro, since without him they practically would not have been able to do it. The potential of this character is the most promising for the future of Dragon Ball, since Goku considers him as his own successor. Having the responsibility of being the next protector of the Earth when Goku and the others are no longer there? After the time jump that was in the superhero movie, it's expected that Ob, like Goten and Trunks, will leave behind his stage as a child to enter adolescence. However, his participation in an upcoming tournament of power is in danger since he totally lacks experience and has not had any approach with Goku, so he has not learned to use his powers. So unfortunately, he would not be part of the final team of the Universe 7. Mirus, the Renegade Angel, and the Saga of Moro had disappeared for having used his true abilities as an angel. But thanks to his noble sacrifice, he was granted a new opportunity to live. The second life as a mortal, completely losing his abilities as an angel. Abilities he never came to depend on to become the best galactic patroller in the universe. So, as a mortal, Mirus is still one of the best. His intelligence and dexterity could be ideal for the definitive team of Universe 7, since there's no rule that prevents him from participating now that he's become a mortal. So this would be my ideal and definitive team of Universe 7 team if there was another power lave, placing us after what happened in the Dragon Ball Super movie, Superhero.